Hello, I wish to welcome you to this new series of lectures on macroeconomics. Um, it's very important that we begin to consider how the economy works as a whole. And for that matter, um, our first lecture on macroeconomics will be on how to measure a nation's income. Now, before we zoom into this topic, I'd like to urge you to subscribe to this channel if you find this lecture interesting, and particularly give us a thumbs up if you think the lecture is interesting. And then also you can leave a constructive comment in the comments box if you think there is something we can do better. So let's start. In today's lecture, we will seek to answer three main questions. The first question is what is gross domestic product or GDP? How is gross domestic product related to a nation's total income and expended? And three, what are the components of gross domestic product? In our le earlier lecture, we classified economics into two. First, microeconomics, which studies household and firm behavior. In other words, how households and firms make decisions, economic decisions in particular. Now, macroeconomics studies the economy as a whole, or it studies economy-wide phenomena, including inflation, unemployment, and economic growth. So this will be the focus of uh, our subsequent lectures, as we'll see. So what is GDP? GDP measures total income of everyone in the economy. It also measures total expenditure on the economy's output of goods and services. Now, in this case, what this means is that income equals expenditure. And this is true for the economy as a whole. And also because every dollar or CD or pound or currency a buyer spends is a dollar or a CD of income for the seller. And so in our previous lectures, we considered the circular flow diagram as a model of the economy. And we said that this circular flow diagram is a simple depiction of the macro economy. We said that the circular flow diagram also illustrates GDP as spending, revenue, factor payments, and income. Now, it's important that we consider some of the key factors here. Yeah? So one of the uh, key or important things I want us to look at is what factors of production are. And this is a concept um, we are familiar with from our lectures in economics, basic economics. So factors of production are inputs like labor, land, capital, and natural resources we use in the production of goods and services. Now, factor payments are payments to the factors of production. And so we we'll pay labor wages, land is rewarded with rent, and then capital um, receives profit. So let's consider the circular flow diagram as a depiction or a model of the macro economy. So the economy is made up of firms and households, according to the circular flow diagram. The households own the factors of production. They sell and they rent them to firms for income. They also buy and consume goods and services produced by the firms. 
The firms, on the other hand, buy and high factor factors of production, which they use in the production of goods and services. And the firms also sell goods and services to the households. Now, there's also a market for factors of production. And in this market, households sell their factors of production. So labor, land, and capital is sold as factors of production to firms. And then in exchange, firms reward these factors of production with wages for labor, rent for land, and profit for capital. There's a fourth component, which is the market for goods and services. And in this market for goods and services, households, after earning income from selling their factors of production to firms, they purchase goods and services in the market for goods and services. And this, the revenue generated from the sale of goods and services then comes to the firms, as we can see. So what does this diagram omit? There are three important things. The first one is that this diagram omits the role of government. The fact that governments collect taxes, they buy goods and services as well. It also omits the role of the financial system. The financial system is responsible for matching savers, surplus, or supply of funds with borrowers to demand for loans. And it also omits the foreign sector. So in the foreign sector, there's trading of goods and services, there's trading of financial assets and currencies with the country's residents. So what is GDP in simple terms? We would say that GDP or gross domestic product is the market value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a given period of time. And I'll repeat this. Gross domestic product is the market value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a given period of time. So there are key words we need to take into account. And the very first key word here is the market value, market value. So it is important to note that goods are valued at the market price. And so all goods measured in the same unit. Okay, so, so in other words, goods, all the goods you are going to buy or sell are measured in the same unit. In this case, the currency is Ghana cities. And things that cannot have a market value are excluded, okay? So examples of such things are household work we do for ourselves. So in simple terms, we are looking at goods that have market value and those that do not have market value or for which we cannot see prices for on the market will be excluded from the GDP calculation. The second important concept I want to highlight is this concept of all, so all. What this means is that GDP includes all items produced in the economy and sold legally in markets. The GDP will therefore exclude most items produced and sold illicitly or illegally. It also excludes most items that are produced and consumed at home. Okay. The third concept I want to look at is final goods. And final goods are goods that are intended for the end user. Now, another concept that will be interesting for us to think about is intermediate goods. And these are uh, goods that are used as components or ingredients in the production of other goods. 
Now, it's important to note that GDP only includes final goods. And it's because they already embody the value of the intermediate goods used in their production. You get it? So final goods actually utilize intermediate goods in their production. Now, the fourth concept I will look at is goods and services produced. So the goods and services can be classified into two. You have tangible goods like DVD players, mountain bikes, and beer as examples. And you have intangible goods and services like dry cleaning, concerts, cell phone services, etc. And then the fifth concept is produced, produced. By production or produced, we mean that GDP includes currently produced goods, not goods produced in the past. And also the set concept is within a country, within a country. By this, we mean that GDP measures the value of production that occurs within a country's borders, whether done by its own citizens or by foreigners located there. And the last concept we want to look at in the definition of the GDP is in a given period of time. This actually means usually in a year or quarterly, which is three months. So let's recall a few things. So GDP is total spending in the economy. And GDP, in summary, has four main components. The first is consumption. The second is investment. The third is government purchases. And the fourth is net exports. So mathematically, we can express these components of GDP as Y, which represents GDP, as equal to C, which represents consumption, plus I, which represents investment, plus G, which represents government purchases, plus NX, which stands for net exports. So let's consider each of these components of GDP. So first, we'll look at consumption. And so what is consumption? Consumption refers to the total spending by households on goods and services. It refers to the total spending by households on goods and services. Note on housing costs. Now, for renters, consumption includes rent payments. For households, Consumption includes the imputed rental value of a house, but not the purchase price or mortgage payments. And consumption does not include purchases of new houses. Now, we would also define investment as total spending on goods that will be used in the future to produce more goods. So for example, investment may include business capital, which will be used in the development of business structures, the purchase of equipment and intellectual property products. It would also include residual capital, sorry, residential capital, which includes landlords, apartment buildings, eh, homeowners, personal residence, etc. And Investment would also include inventory accumulations. And this represents goods produced but not sold yet. Therefore, investment does not mean the purchase of financial assets like stocks and bonds in the market. The third component we'll look at is government purchases. And this government purchases represents all spending on goods and services purchased by the government, whether at the federal state, at the state level, or at the local levels. In Ghana, we will look at the national level and or the state level as against the local level. 
Now, in defining government purchases, we would exclude transfer payments. And transfer payments include payments such as social security or unemployment insurance benefits. They are not purchases of goods and services. And this is a reason why we would exclude them in the computation of government purchases. Now let's turn our attention to net exports. Now net exports represents the difference between the value of exports and the value of imports. So exports here represent foreign spending on the economy's goods and services. And imports here represent the portion of consumption, investment and government purchases that are spent on goods and services produced abroad. And so when we add all of these four components, we would arrive at GDP. Now let's consider this example. It's um, an example of um, GDP uh, for the United States and its components, as we can see, uh, for the year 2015. So from this chart, we can see that the total GDP is about 17 trillion, and uh, that constitutes 100% of the GDP. Now, in terms of uh, consumption, uh, there's about 12 billion, and this constitutes about 68% of its GDP. Investment is about three. Uh, okay, so let me go back. So consumption constitutes about 12 trillion, which uh, constitutes 68% of um, the GDP of the US. Investment is about 3 trillion, which is 16%, 16.8% actually. Government purchases is about uh, 3 trillion as well, uh, which um, constitutes 17.7% as we can see. And net exports, is actually negative. And um, as we can see here, it constitutes minus 2.9% of the GDP of the US. At this moment, let's consider some active learning processes to reinforce the basic concepts we have attempted to develop so far. So in each of the following cases, we are required to determine how much GDP and each of its components is affected, if at all. So in A, Debbie spends $300 to buy her husband dinner at the finest restaurant in Kumase. B, Sarah spends $1,200 on a new laptop to use in her publishing business. The laptop was built in China. C, Jane spends $800 on a computer to use in her editing business. She got last year's model on sale for a great price from a local manufacturer. And D, Kantan Kamoto's bills 500 million worth of cars, but consumers only buy 470 million worth of them. So what are the answers to these questions? So for A, Debbie spends $300 to buy her husband dinner at the finest restaurant in Kumase. The answer is that this is consumption and it will increase GDP by $300 or pounds or CDs, depending on the currency you are looking at. B, Sarah spends 1,200 on a new laptop to use in her publishing business. The laptop was built in China. Now, this is an investment and it increases by $1,200. Net exports will fall by $1,200. GDP is unchanged. And C, Jane spends $800 on a computer to use in her editing business. She got last year's model on sale for a great price from a local manufacturer. So it is part of current GDP. 
and investment do not change because the computer was built last year. Remember we said that GDP focuses on current items, okay? So anything that was built last year will not be accounted for in, care, in the current GDP of a country. And then D, Kantan Kamoto's builds 500 million worth of cars, but consumers only buy 470 million of them. This is, will be part of consumption and it will increase by $470 million. Now, inventory investment will rise by $30 million and GDP will rise by $500 million. Okay, so at this point, we would like to end this part of the series on macroeconomics. We have attempted to look at some of the basic concepts uh, used in the measurement of a nation's income. In part two, we'll continue by answering two fundamental questions. That is, how is GDP corrected for inflation? And does GDP measure society's well-being? Thank you for watching this series. Watch out for part two of this series.